What if I told you that one of the most ambitious metro projects in history almost didn't happen? Not because of money or engineering, but because of ancient ghosts buried beneath the streets. This is Thessaloniki, Greece, a city where digging a subway didn't just mean moving dirt, it meant rewriting history. Over 300,000 artifacts, a lost Roman highway, and mosaics so precious they've been called the Byzantine Pompeii, all found where a modern metro was supposed to go. For decades, engineers and archaeologists were locked in a high-stakes battle. Progress versus preservation. The future versus the past. The project was delayed 30 years, cost billions, and nearly collapsed under the weight of its own discoveries. But in the end, they didn't just build a metro, they resurrected an empire. This is the insane true story of how Thessaloniki's metro defied the impossible. And why, when you dig into the past, the past digs back. Stay with me, because what happened here changes everything about how we build modern cities on ancient land. Picture this. Construction workers in Thessaloniki, Greece, are digging a simple metro tunnel when suddenly, smash! Their tools hit something hard. Not rock, not concrete, but a 1,700-year-old mosaic so beautiful, so perfectly preserved, it looks like it was made yesterday. This wasn't just a lucky find. It was the beginning of a nightmare for engineers. Because beneath this modern city lies an entire ancient world, and it refused to be ignored. Thessaloniki isn't just any city. Founded in 315 BC, it's been ruled by Romans, Byzantines, and Ottomans, each leaving behind layers of history. Today, it's Greece's second largest city, packed with traffic, desperate for a metro. But how do you build a 21st century subway in a place where every shovel risks destroying a priceless artifact? The answer? You don't. At least not without 30 years of chaos, angry protests, and a hole in the ground that became a national joke. Let's rewind. The idea for a metro started after a devastating fire in 1917. But plans stalled. Until the 1980s when the city finally said, let's do this. The original plan? Dig shallow tunnels, just two meters deep. Simple, right? Wrong. Archaeologists immediately warned, this city is built on ruins. Dig here, and you'll hit history. Engineers didn't listen. They had to. When workers uncovered ancient roads, graves, and even entire buildings just below the surface, the Metro team panicked. They redesigned everything, pushing tunnels deeper, seven meters down. Surely that would work? Nope. Construction began in 2006. But delays hit immediately. Money problems, political fights, and then the whole of Kuvalas. A giant pit near the city center, meant to be a station, sat empty for years. No work, no progress. Just a muddy crater that became a symbol of the metro's failures. Locals joked, if you want to see Greece's biggest monument, look at the hole that goes nowhere. Meanwhile, the city suffered. Streets were blocked. Businesses lost customers. A whole generation grew up with construction noise and detours. The metro was supposed to open in 2012, then 2018, then 2020. Each delay cost millions. People asked, why can't we just build it? The answer, because the past wouldn't let them. And then, the real shock. Tunnel digging machines hit even more ruins. Not just pottery or coins, a lost Roman marketplace, a Byzantine fountain, a 1,500-year-old street so intact you could still see chariot marks. Archaeologists cheered, engineers groaned. Each discovery meant more redesigns, more delays. The metro was trapped between the city's future and its past. So what happened next? How did they finally finish it? And what does this mean for other ancient cities? That's part two, where we'll see how Thessaloniki's metro went from disaster 
to miracle. But for now, think about this. What's under your city? And what would happen if your subway project dug up an empire? So, how do you build a metro when the ground beneath you is a treasure chest of ancient history? Simple. You dig deeper. Much deeper. The Saloniki's engineers faced an impossible choice. Destroy irreplaceable ruins or abandon the metro forever. But then, they came up with a bold solution. Go down, not sideways. Instead of 7 meters, they dug 30 meters below the city deep enough to dodge most of the ancient world above. But even then, the past wouldn't stay buried. As workers dug, they uncovered over 300,000 artifacts, an entire underground city. They found Roman villas with floors so detailed, they looked brand new. They discovered a 1,700-year-old main street, the Roman Decumanus, perfectly preserved beneath today's roads. And then, the biggest shock of all, Inside what would become Venizelu Station, they hid a Byzantine Pompeii. Mosaics, walls, even an ancient public square frozen in time. Archaeologists called it a miracle. Engineers called it a nightmare. Every discovery meant more delays, more redesigns, more money. The budget ballooned from 1.5 billion euros to over 2.5 billion euros. Excavating just one station, Agia Sophia, cost nearly 140 million euros alone. Why? Because they weren't just digging dirt, they were excavating a museum. Not everyone agreed on what to do next. Some wanted to move the artifacts to a museum. Others demanded the metro integrate them, turning stations into underground exhibits. The debate got so heated, protests erupted. Archaeologists chained themselves to dig sites. Politicians argued for years. Finally, they found a compromise. Save what they could. Move what they had to. Some mosaics were carefully lifted and sent to museums. Others were left exactly where they were found, right inside the metro stations. Today, when you wait for a train at Venizelu, you stand on glass floors staring down at Byzantine streets beneath your feet. All these changes came at a cost, time. The metro was supposed to take 10 years to build. It took over 30. For locals, it became a joke. Will we ever ride this train? Businesses near construction zones suffered the most. Shops closed. Streets were blocked for decades. One cafe owner famously said, I served my first coffee to a young man. By the time the metro opened, he came back with his son. Then, in 2023, the impossible happened. Thessaloniki's metro finally opened. The first test runs were emotional. People cried. Reporters called it the most expensive museum in Greece. And the best part? It worked. The metro was fast, quiet, and thanks to all those delays, flawless. Engineers even added driverless trains something even Athens doesn't have. Now, the city is planning Line 2, extending the metro further. But this time, they know the drill. Expect the unexpected. Because in Thessaloniki, the past never stays buried. So, was it worth it? The delays? The cost? The fights? Ask the kid who rides to school over a 2,000-year-old mosaic, and I think you'll get your answer.